So I'm going to tell you a little bit about wedging. Um, first, the reasons why we wedge clay. Wedging uh, makes the clay homogeneous, and so it makes it uniform in moisture consistency. Two, we can use it to get air pockets, uh, things that were folded into it. And three, we can make it prepared to throw. We sort of warm it up. It's like stretching uh, so that we can work with it on the wheel or we can work with it hand building. Um, wedging begins with our toes, our stance. It's really hard to wedge sitting down. You need to use your body mass and that's actually quite, quite a powerful tool for getting the clay to do what you want. So I start by putting one leg forward, one leg back so I can kind of rock heel to toe and then I could use that motion to drive into the clay with my arms. As we move up the body, we're going to get our arms so that they're not fully extended like this and working out of our shoulder. Just like with throwing, we want to get our arms down against us or near our body core so that we can move that mass with us. Okay, we're going to get a little closer and I'm going to show you the hands. The hands, there's two ways you can use your body mass to work the clay. One is kind of the traditional art teacher way, which I don't like even as an art teacher, and that is kind of the symmetry where we have our hands on either side, we're pushing, and then we roll back. The other is where we create a spiral, and we can actually drive our mass more efficiently with one hand, and then the other hand backs it up for us. So I'm going to show you the symmetry one because it's easy to see, and this is what a lot of people are familiar with when they come to class. Um, first off, hands on either side, got our feet positioned so we can rock with our mass, and we don't have our elbows out, we have them in. And what I'm going to do is push in and forward, and so it looks like this. Pushing in on the sides, and it should be a fairly narrow width across this way. We don't want it out wide because that means we're folding the clay over on itself. And the shape that we form looks a little bit like a monkey here. It has the ram's head on the side. Okay, that is a symmetrical way of wedging. Hands on either side, pushing in and rocking forward. This technique is more efficient, but it's a little bit harder to learn. You can choose either right hand or left hand. And what we're gonna do is we have our hands like this, wind it up a little bit, and we're gonna push and roll back. Push and roll back. And so we're not pushing straight down, kind of just pushing and turning. I'm letting that clay slide. And you can see the tail that's starting to form from this. And just to see that it's moving, within two rotations, I can move the clay probably about 10 inches. And so it's very efficient, it takes much less energy, and I can use my rocking motion, my posture, to help move that clay. The pattern it forms is sort of like the clay itself, the cone shape. And so this technique marries well with throwing on the potter's wheel. It's already in the spin for you and um, it's basically like wedging on the wheel. Okay, moving into the next step. Um, as a beginner, a lot of your wedging techniques are going to look something like this, probably pushing forward like you're kneading bread. And what that's doing is folding air in there. Um, you're going to have to try to get that air out the sides. Okay, so as a beginner, you're going to work air into your clay most likely, and so we have a technique for getting that out. It's called tamping, and we can take this and turn the clay into a loaf. I'm tapping it, four sides, and then compressing the ends and I can even stretch it a little bit, and that will open up air pockets if they're in there, and then close that off. When I wedge, I usually wedge more clay than I need so that I can take off the pieces that I need for my projects. Let's take a look inside, and when we do this, we can look and see if there's air pockets. We can stretch it and open up the clay. After that, we can take these corners and tap it into a ball or an egg shape. A couple reasons to work with a round piece of clay. Um, flat pieces of clay with edges, this dries out, okay? So it'll store longer and keep better if it's rounded. Also, when we go to use it, um, a rounded surface, 
when it presses down, it pushes the air out to the sides. A flat surface, when we press it down, that cups air, that sound you hear there, that slapping, it's cupping air on those flat flanges. So after we've wedged it, cut it, tap it into balls, and that'll keep better for hand building as well as wheel work.